Hi guys, my name is Mati Kadosh. I'm from Elanox, working in software architecture there. And today what, what we are going to talk about is um, how can we add programmability into Sally. Um, so, and the main challenge here, uh, we are lo looking at the left part, we're looking at the old world, which is like the Sai world in which there is an existing pipeline, fixed pipeline, fixed API, you have everything predefined. Uh, which is cool because you can, uh, it is uniform, uh, all the silicon look the same, so you as an application writer do, do not care whether you're working on uh, Menanox silicon, Broadcom silicon, Kevin silicon, or barefoot silicon, you do not care, you just want the functionality, which is cool. Um, but uh, we want to, be, to do better than that, and uh, um, what you believe in in Menanox is that uh, the right part of the table, which is the all new world in which you want everything flexible, probably is less realistic. Probably most of, uh, less realistic is not, there will be use cases in which someone will, 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 will want to reinvent the networking. But most use cases are actually at the bottom part, in which you are taking some existing predefined pipeline and you want to modify it. You want to add some flexibility to, to that part. And the question is how can we do that? How can we use the uniform Sci API and still have the flexibility? This working magic, I didn't, didn't touch anything. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry for that. Okay, let's go back. Okay, and this is what we propose. So what we propose is actually a combination. A combination, and this is actually going back to what Gohan started to talk about. How can we add a flexible? <laughs> oh, you're a smart guy. You cut me. Man. <laughs> um, so, um, what we'd like to do is to take a legacy pipeline, a side pipeline, um, a legacy application work on top. So it, it can be Sonic or Adonis, it can run Quagga or it can run FRR on top of side API and in addition to that to add some uh, flexibility to it, to, to, to customize it. So what we uh, uh, want to, 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 pr to propose is the ability of a user to write his own program, whether it is uh, with some programming language, some pipeline description language, it could be P4, it could be EBPF, it could be other languages, we don't care, to compile it. As a result, to get a pipeline, uh, the hardware implementation of that part, and a auto-generated Sci API as well. Um, so first question can, can be why those API will why is Psy auto-generated and not some other API? Psy P4, like P4 runtime, for example. And the answer for that is that if you want an hybrid mode in which you, in, in which you have a legacy application running with new programmable one, you must have the same object. You cannot define router interface in the legacy part and then try to use it in a P4 runtime in the other side because this is, P4 runtime does not know what is a Psy reef object. So, those layers must be aligned. So, um, what we want to do is um, look at, what I want to talk about now is um, which is in Mellanox, a P, a, a, the, the P4 as, as, a, as, as a language to start with. Um, and the reason we choose P4 is looking at P4.16, it, it, it looks suitable to us because actually P4.16, Introduce the uh, the target architecture uh, uh, um, concept, which actually fits to what we are trying to do. So, what we are trying to do now is to come with the side target architecture. Why side target architecture? Because why side target architecture will be common between all silicon vendors. It won't be Melnox target architecture or Cavium or target architecture. It will be Psi. and then. This architecture will, uh, uh, will be uh, compressed from uh, several predefined blocks which we already find in the sign community like the port layer, bridge layer, router layer, tunnel layer, etc. 
and a few programmable blocks. Um, those programmable blocks can be uh, inserted inside the legacy pipeline in a few points. Um, we propose some, uh, to start with four. Um, tomorrow in the SAI uh, meeting, we will talk about that in more, some more details. Um, in addition to that, um, we propose to provide this parser and the deparser as a reference code, then user can edit it as well. So user of SAI can edit the SAI parser, which will be provided as a reference, which will, can have a side deparser, which will be provided as a reference. In addition to that, they can insert programmable, a P4 program in, in places in the pipe, compile it and get an auto-generated SAI API out of it. Let's see how uh, the, 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 the compiler architecture look like. Um, so, and it is actually something that works. It's not like a slide. We, I, I will show you a live demo in a minute. Um, so it is based on P416. Um, um, the idea is to create layer. Uh, so the, uh, the front end layer actually, it is, shared, it is a shared layer. It is not, it is provided by, uh, by the barefoot guys. It, it does the synthetic phases and the semantic phases of the language itself. Uh, next, we created the mid layer, which will be an open source as well. This layer just generate the auto, the SAI API, uh, the auto generated Flex API, and the backend layer, which actually per target. So um, there is another uh, backend generic layer, which is uh, the soft switch layer. So this compiler can compile uh, the code into the soft switch, so you can have a, a emulator a software emulator to the uh, newly written P4 code that you um, just write. Um, let's talk about use case and see some uh, qu uh, quick demo. So this is the use case presented by Dev in the morning. Uh, and the, the idea is to try to connect a bare metal de device into the cloud. And uh, the challenge is, is to try to optimize for scale. Um, and uh, didn't touch the mouse this time. Sorry. And to try to optimize for scale. Uh, um, for that, we want to use a non stubborn pipeline uh, in order to do that. Um, so, what we did is we choose to put this pipeline just after the port. We will see that. So, we wrote a program called bearmetal.p4. We compile it. So, what we get is Instantiation of the uh, 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 Tor.p4 in, in the in the pipeline itself. It actually compressed for, from two tables. Um, I, I won't get into details of how those tables look like. Again, we can do. Uh, I will do it tomorrow in, 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 in the talk, and you can see it in uh, Azure Booth. Actually, uh, this demo is working there. Um, and then we generated an, an auto-generated SAI API. Let's see how it looked like actually. So um, this is the P4 program right in, on the left. We will now compile it. And as a result, there will be two outcomes. First, the pipeline will be curved in the silicon and create those two tables. And you, the, those are the side headers that were auto-generated. And those are the side API that were created as a result. As you can see, there are two tables. Whoa, that's a good timing. <laughs> Is um, that the end? Thank you very much. <laughs>